Hi, my name is Terry. Welcome to this week's episode of Being Herds podcast. And I'm doing a video cast this week as well. And I don't know if the board is very clear. I'm getting a little bit of glare here, but I'll walk through it. And it's just basic information. You know, it's, this week's episode is about, again, going deeper into tapping into creativity and intuition in regards to asking the three key questions of, is this information authentic? Is this for from my highest good? And how do I use this to affect change? And there are a lot of gurus, a lot of experts, a lot of coaches who I hold in high regard. Don't get me wrong. And there are some that have done huge work and have really impacted how I work in my life. So I'm not selling them short in any way. But one of the things I find is that a lot of their information is very linear, that it assumes that your ability to get to point A and point B is very clear, it's very open. And one of the things that's really important to be able to do is to tap into your intuition and creativity because then you can get information from innovative sources, from your source that may find solutions and insights that between asking a question and answering it otherwise might not come up. You know, what am I good at? Um, if you stop and thought for a second, you might make a list really quickly. But if you ask that question and say, put it out to the universe, which is my kind of generic term for God, angel, source, however you want to use it. And you put that question out to the universe or you go and do a personal kind of ceremony. And once you've learned to tap into intuition and creativity and you bring these other approaches into that question answering problem solving situation, sometimes we're kind of amazed at what comes back to us, things we never would have considered. Because our intuition and creativity, while they're similar, aren't quite the same. Intuition is all that information that's inside of us that we might not always be aware of, that you know, unless we really have that connection really strong, it just kind of sits there waiting. And the creativity is the component where we see lots of disparate bits of information and how we can tie them together in novel ways. So, for example, I'm going to use a situation I had a while back with someone that I then perceived as a good friend of mine. That's what I now perceive as an unfriend. But we had some things in common. We were both holistic. We both had, you know, very similar perspectives in terms of politics, social issues, etc. And so we would hang out. We'd have a good time. And it always seemed, as I looked over time, that I was investing more in this friendship than was ever coming back, and that it didn't really seem like an equal situation. So I really kept kind of ramming my head against a wall trying to bring resolution or trying to understand what maybe I was doing that when I wasn't trying hard enough or... Maybe I needed to do something different. And so it was really frustrating and it was draining and it was not successful. So then I finally decided to say, all right, I need to step back. And what I did was I went out and I did a sand painting, which is a kind of a ceremony that's taught in indigenous teachings. And I went outside in my yard. I have a big backyard living in the middle of nowhere. And I made a sacred kind of a sex and I sex area to work in and I called on my help and I set my intention kind of like having a conversation whether you want to say it's with yourself with the invisible world and I said hey this is what's going on I could use some help and I had a handful of objects that I had collected along the way of sticks and twigs and rocks and various and sundry things that I had found to represent what I was what I was experiencing and so I put it down I went through it and I said hey this is this is represents my friend this represents me and all the different things I kind of saw. And then I just, I left. And I let it cook, so to speak. And I just, that's way of kind of saying putting it out to the universe, or if you would say, lining it up to your higher self. And in a lot of the same way that, say for example, when I used to teach, I used to tutor, and very often if a student was working on a paper, I would tell them, you know, they have all this information, put a big sheet of paper up on the wall and just start putting your information up on it kind of randomly. And as you go along, you might then 
you know, group things together, but get it out where you can see it. Get it out where you can kind of get a picture and know what you're working with. And so I came back to this sand painting. I came back to the situation. Then I looked at it from different perspectives, and I looked at it from further away, and I looked at it from close up, and I looked at it from different angles. And one of the things I noticed that kind of hit me as an aha is there's a nice little line kind of naturally down the middle of the situation, or this, this section, and all of these things that I had put down in there, almost all of them were on my friend's side of this painting, of this, of this diagram. And there was very little on my side. And that gave me an aha moment. I said, you know, everything is over here and nothing is coming back. And while it wasn't the answer I was initially looking for, it gave me the answer I needed. So is this information authentic? Yeah, it was pretty clear. And I kind of knew that I was investing a lot of energy before, but seeing it and going, wow, there's nothing around me. There's nothing on my side of this equation. And is it from my highest self? Yeah, pretty clear. Is it for my highest good? This information is definitely for my highest good because it told me something that I needed to hear, that this was draining me. And I knew this at, at, a, at an intuitive level, but I hadn't really articulated that to myself until after I had done this creative intuitive process. And so how do I affect change? And I work with this situation energetically, but mostly it gave me the information I needed to affect the change. It gave me the information to say, this is not a balanced relationship. This is not going to be a balanced relationship. And I needed to recalibrate my priorities. So what that did for me was allowed me to see something visually that was floating around in the ether. And when I saw it visually, the information from my intuition was giving me what I needed to hear, and then I was able to use that to affect change, which was to redefine this relationship, to stop investing so much in it, and to start thinking about where my priorities were, what was going to serve me, and what was going to move me forward. And I did some energetic clearing and healing with that as well, but the information needed to be there before I even needed to know what to do with it. And so whether it's for personal healing or clearing or for productivity, being able to tap your intuition, find out what's going on, and also have creative solutions that you otherwise might not be able to find if you answer a question in the immediacy. Like wine, it needs to age, or bread, it needs to rise. That very often, having that pregnant pause, as we talk about in literature, between the question and the answer gives us an opportunity for possibilities that we otherwise wouldn't have had on board. So there's a lot of things on the site that really will teach you about creativity, intuition, and awareness. And when we have those, we fall into what we refer to as energetic integrity. And that helps us to shift our relationships because when we have a perception of what's going on, we can navigate those waters a lot better. Whether it's a personal relationship, a professional relationship, or just your relationship in terms of your business and moving forward and finding out where you need to go and what's going on, you get those aha moments. And so I really invite you to go through the blog posts, go through the articles, look at the book. Like I said, in the past, the book is The Cost of a Latte. And that encapsulates all of the teachings that I have had in the course of over a decade of working with some of the world's top, top healers, teachers, and spiritual coaches. And so I invite you to this week, your kind of homework would be to come up with some way in which you can tap into your intuition or creativity and apply that to some situation and then notice what is different. And that's your homework, and I really would like to see you. And then let me know how that works out. I want to hear different people's kind of responses and share those in the comments. And, you know, maybe you have a way of you do, utilizing your creativity and intuition that 
is even better. And I'd love to hear about that. So until next week, have a great time, play well, be well, embrace the change.